In this video, I want to present a media player to you. This is not a product. This is a tool we give away for free. We made it ourselves to help us when we go to a trade show, or we run a demonstration. We want demo content on a video switcher. We want to have monitors that runs presentations. All those things can be done with a nice little Raspberry Pi. And we made an application that helps us to remote control that. And yes, it can be interfaced with Skyhoy products. It can also do a whole lot of other things. And it's free, you can download it, you can follow the instructions on our wiki page. And in this video, I want to show how that works. All right, so first a little bit about the setup. I'll just demo here. We have an ATEM switcher here and on that screen, which I'll share with you in the video, you can see the output of the four inputs coming from the media players over here. So these are Raspberry Pis. They are a mix of Raspberry Pi 5, Raspberry Pi 4, and also 64 and 32 bits. This is a Stream Deck. And yes, it can be connected straight to the Raspberry Pis and you will see the thumbnails in the display buttons of the media that you will basically play. We'll get back to that. That's really useful. And here you have a um, break, um, ah, ah, it's a frame shot uno, which is one of our most unique rack units because it has color screens. It has four way buttons. It has OLED displays with a large, nice size and it shows the thumbnails as well. Now, this one is cool because being network connected to the four um, media players helps us to actually make this a selection button over here. But I'll also get back to that. So basically, this is a free utility. And the web UI is one of the really awesome thing that I want to show you. You see right here, this is the web UI of one of the players, player number one. But that is able to see there are another three players on the network. So it actually connects not only to itself, which is the host, it also connects to the other ones. And in this web UI, which is like the like main control of the players, you can see which video clip is playing, what time it is playing at, the fact that it's looping. Those details are shared with you in the top here. Right now, it is playing back videos and I am just playing back videos I could have presented at a trade show and actually did in Las Vegas. So yes, if we scroll through the whole list, you see all these media files, which we can now play back. And if I want to play back one of the other ones, I just click that one and then it comes up. Okay, let's see it working. So uh, I did that on player number two. Let's just bring player number two up here on program. So you see in program, we have player number two. If I change, you actually see it's exiting the playback and within about a second, it will launch the other video clip. So it's not like smooth. It doesn't have like um, a immediate transition to the next video, unless actually you arrange them in a playlist. But it is still pretty useful for what it is, especially when you just want to load these clips up. You can choose different ways to end the video. It can freeze. It can also just exit and you will see the screen you saw a moment ago. You can also click this one and it will just stop. If you change the background image of the Raspberry Pi playing this one back, you will see a, a more beautiful background. It could be black. It could also be a graphic you put in. That's up to you totally. And um, it's just to say that to have that kind of pause screen, that is up to you. If you click the title up here, you also see what resolutions the media players will play back in. That is again useful because you may want to adjust the frame rate and the resolution of these. And um, that's in that list. And finally, there are some very important functions, which is that these media players can boot up and play back a video clip automatically. And that is selected simply from the list of files that are found on the USB key, which is another point, namely that in the media players you saw before, there is just a simple USB stick that holds all the media files. So when you have it turned off, you can just pull it out. You can put video files on it, image files, whatever you want. You can set up the configuration and plug it back in, turn it on, and it will be ready to go again. So that's kind of the um, uh, basics of this. The, it's not just videos it can play back. That's definitely the most prominent use case I can think of. Right now, we are playing back a sample video here on input number three. Let's bring that up on preview. 
So you see, this is just playing back, but I could also play back an audio file. I could also play back an image slideshow. And if I do that, you'll see shortly that it starts VLC. VLC is a well-known media player. And with that, we are basically instructing it to make a slideshow out of six files. And they are now just um, like looped over with a transition time of like 10 seconds. This is something that can be adjusted in a JSON file. So you see these files are just being transitioned. Now, something really exciting is the next thing I want to show you. That is, we can show a website full screen. So if I press that button and just wait a second, you'll see that it loads up a web browser in kiosk mode, which means that it takes over the full screen. And in this case, the web URL that I gave it is to a stream, a web RTC stream of a live performance. So actually now I am watching a live stream on the HDMI output of this Raspberry Pi player. If I wanted to prove that point to you, I have another website over here that is skahoy.com. So it will just bring up the Skahoy website on camera number one you can see on the screen. So in a moment, you'll see our website there. In the meantime, let's move on and then click this button because if you notice, on the second player, I had a web camera pulled up. Oh, there we go. Hello, this is me. And that's also another useful application that you have the support to take the associated web camera in the Raspberry Pi and just bring it up in full screen on the um, HDMI output. What I just pressed here is number six, which is a sample stream and RTSP. It's a different kind of streaming than the WebRTC I showed you a moment ago. Actually, the WebRTC was just the website I was pointing at. And the main point is, as you can see right now, if you go to camera number one, let's bring it up here on preview. That is the Skahoy website in all its glory or lack of so. And the sample stream that I had a moment ago here on number three, that sample stream is actually a real stream coming from this URL. Let's look at some of the ways we can play back files from the media players. So again, it is for like a trade show. It may also be useful in actual production. I've not tested that, but to control these players, you can either use a Skyhoy product or Stream Deck. And with a Skyhoy product, we have made a configuration for a Frameshot Uno that allows you to select your media player out here and also select your media here. So if I press this button, you'll see that I'm changing what media is played back on player number two by simply pressing these buttons. It's also lighting up in green, very useful. And now I'll just show you the UI of this. It's running out of my blue pill. And if I go to the simulator, we can see it on screen. That is in a sense more convenient right now. So we can basically simulate the button presses here in the simulator. And we also see the thumbnails that are shown in the displays. If we press this button, you are basically paging through the available media. So I have multiple pages, meaning that no matter how many files I have, I am able to page through until, um, yeah, through all the media files that I have put in there and being able to play these back. Okay, so that's how the Frameshot Uno works. And I will look more into detail on that in a different video. Also, the Stream Deck is here. So if I press this button, you can see I'm now selecting the first media file on our media player, which is number three here. Let's press the second button. If I press that, it goes on to the next. On the third button, that is this one. We play back this one, then this one, then this one, and then like this one. So these plug straight into the USB and having all the thumbnails nicely shown on these displays is also a very useful way of using this. In the next videos, I'll show you how you can configure this, how easy it is to make a, a media file playback, and actually also how crazy you can go in terms of configuration if you really want to tweak it, add your own custom thumbnails, etc.